So I'm here in the home ship fab, and I want to show you a pretty simple way to measure the thickness of thin films that are on the order of a few nanometers to a few microns using only an optical spectrometer that I picked up off eBay, like everything else here, and a white light source. So before I go into how it actually works, I'll just give you a quick demo. I've got it set up with a one centimeter square of silicon that I've coated with about a 750 nanometer layer of photoresist. The photoresist was spin coated, and it's a pretty easy way of getting a calibration standard with a liquid of known viscosity, and if you spin it onto the wafer at a known RPM, then you should get a pretty repeatable thickness. In my case, I was using this resist in red, which is this trace spun at about 4,000 RPM, which gives a film of, roughly speaking here, 750 nanometers. And uh, if we go over to a little Python script I wrote, um, right now we're looking at a bare piece of silicon, so it's not getting the expected spectrum, but if I just use the uh, XY table here and I move the microscope and position it to uh, look at the sample we want to analyze, we come back over here and notice there's a bunch of peaks. It's found those peaks with little markers at the uh, maximum minimum points. And then given that spectra, it's done some math, which I'll show you. And it said that our film is about 820 nanometers in thickness, which is in pretty good agreement with the 750 nanometers we expect. So this is great. In the process of making chips, you have to deposit and etch a number of thin films of varying thicknesses uh, onto your substrate. For instance, when you're growing an oxide, like an insulator onto the wafer, you put it in this furnace here, and uh, you can guess to what the endpoint will be based on like the time and temperature and humidity and, and everything like that. But there's a lot of factors and you'll never get it quite right. So it's really nice to actually get a real qualitative, quantitative value rather. And uh, you can stop guessing about some of these parameters and be more scientific about it. This is a really overkill setup. Believe me that most of this stuff here is not necessary. It's just kind of cluttering the picture here. This system that I use is a wafer prober. It's got these like sharp needle point tips and you can put them on a silicon wafer to kind of probe it. But um, that's not important. I'm just using it for its microscope here and kind of sturdy base. You could build this with like some kind of LED lamp and then a spectrometer. For the spectrometer, I've got um, this Ocean Optics STS UV visible uh, spectrometer. They're on eBay for like $400 or so. You can get them for a little less if you're a patient, I think. And um, there are a lot of other options. You're mainly looking to analyze light in the range of say 400 to 1000 nanometers. Any band of that that's about 400 or 500 nanometers wide is good for these kind of measurements. A, a wider band is of course a lot better because you can get more measurements across that band and, and kind of average it. So I have a illuminator that's just like a halogen light bulb inside this standard microscope illuminator it comes through this fiber optic neck gooseneck thing shines down in axis uh, with the microscope comes out the objective hits the sample and then that light comes right back up in the same axis and some is split off for the eyepieces of course which isn't really important and the rest of it goes into this spectrometer the way this actually works is it relies on thin film interference when you look at a silicon wafer that has a film on it, they often have these beautiful iridescent kind of shiny colors. And that's because the thin film interference kind of selects these wavelengths very sharply. It's like a very sharp filter around specific wavelengths. And that's why it gives you such brilliant, beautiful colors. Stained glass windows have a similar effect, but a different, different mechanism to uh, get these sharp bins of color. Dichroic filters and optics utilize this, and that's why they have a really, really sharp on and off cut. In any case, we have a film of uh, some thickness and different wavelengths will go through that film or, or be reflected off that film with different intensities. So that's all we're measuring here is kind of the relative intensity of all these different wavelengths. And then if we have some Python script or whatever that finds the period of this, so you can select these little markers and that can be done really simply. We just have some input, um, taking the derivative of it in the software and then wherever the derivative crosses zero, we have like a maximum or minimum. And um, the more of these markers you have, you can kind of average your measurement over a longer field and get more accurate measurements. We're only picking up three points here and the fourth one we're missing for some reason, a software problem. But um, when you know the period of this kind of sinusoid here, then you plug it into this formula and uh, you magically get the thickness out if you know the refractive index of the material. A little more precisely, what's going on here is a classic demonstration of interference. You can see in this picture, we have a thin film in the represented by the color red, and we have two different wavelengths going in just for a simplified demonstration. In reality, it's a white light with a spectrum of them, which is pretty important. Just for example, we'll consider the blue light coming on. Some of those blue photons bounce off the top surface of the thin film, 
and some of them go through the entire thickness of the film and they bounce off the surface of the substrate instead. That means one of the rays of light has gone a longer path length and therefore with respect to the other one is phase shifted a little bit. So when both rays come out of the thin film at roughly the same angle and they recombine with each other, one is shifted a bit and they can constructively or destructively interfere. In this example here, we can see destructive interference with the blue one and constructive interference with the red one. So you can imagine where the sinusoidal kind of spectra comes from on our um, spectrometer. So some of these wavelengths are coming out of the film unharmed and other wavelengths are kind of being filtered out and nulled. Here's the equation I used to convert the spectrometer data to usable thickness measurements. You give it n, the refractive index, delta m, the number of peaks you can count, and then lambda 2, lambda 1 are the window in which you're counting those peaks in nanometers or microns, whatever unit you want. Theta is the angle of incidence of the light going to the spectrometer uh, off the wafer surface, and I can simplify the left-hand side of this, in my case, to delta m over 2n. I can grab a sample that was coated with some thicker photoresist that was more viscous, and uh, this, in theory, is about a 2 micron film, 2.0 something. So to measure a new sample, I just put it under there, and um, we'll move over the XY stage to uh, kind of focus on the sample we want to look at. This sample is a broken fragment of a chip I made, but it's coated in photoresist, so it's perfect for this. Having the eyepiece on this microscope set up is nice for alignment. I can get like this focused spot and I can measure the thickness of the film anywhere on it, which is pretty nice. Let me head over to the same Python script from before. Um, it's correctly identified like these peaks and then we can see that it says the thickness is a little over two microns, which is great. You know, that's within the margin of error of the RPM of my spinny thing, the viscosity of the resist, the measurement error of everything. So I'm good with that. And uh, that shows that it's working quite well. That's about all I have. It was kind of a short video, but I hope you enjoyed it. I have a couple more coming up that I think you'll like. And I hope everyone is staying healthy and safe in these crazy times. I think it's good to be able to work on things if you can and, and stay busy with projects. Next steps for this are kind of obvious. If I can motorize this XY stage here or put it on like a 3D printer or something, then I should be able to make 3D topology maps of the surface, which would be super cool. And uh, I could put a wafer in it and see how uniform the spin coating process is and uh, compare to like how, how good it is in, in industry, which is supposedly on the order of like angstroms, like actual uh, uh, within a few atomic layers across the wafer surface, which is amazing. But we'll see how good I can do it uh, in here. So anyway, hope you learned something and enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.